everybody. Welcome to a Friday edition, Black Friday, if you will, for Omnibros Live. Uh, today, it's manga night. We couldn't do an episode yesterday because everybody was celebrating, giving thanks and all that nonsense. So we're here tonight to talk a little bit about what's happening in the news. Not everything. I got some manga first impressions. We got some hauls, some reads, a little bit of everything. Uh, thrown in between. It's your boy Gio here from Manga Geekdom, and I'm joined by William T. Dustin making his return to the manga streams. Riley, how you doing? I'm good. Does my does it look like my shirt says cream? Yes, yes, it does. That is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I just I was like pivoting around and I realized that my my name tag like covered the S. I was like, hey, cream. Cream. cream baby. I, I, I missed I missed last week. Right, because I was yeah. You were you were sick that day, or starting to get sick. I Did think. I miss the the previous week as well? I don't know. But the manga check. I don't think I missed the previous one. I think I just missed no. No, the previous one was when I was I wasn't at home, and I I you thought that I was gonna miss, and I was like, no, no, no I'll still. Uh, we where we talked to uh, Lou was on with us. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I did talk about that. Dogs Red and uh, the anime stuff uh, streaming. Yeah, yeah. I was so, I was last week, um, yeah. and that sucked. Hopefully, you are feeling a little bit better. Uh, that's great. Love love to hear that. Feeling uh, I think yeah. better. Almost one hundred percent. Almost one hundred percent. Well, after tonight, you're gonna get to one hundred percent because it's gonna be an amazing night. On the show, thank you to the chat as always for chiming in. We already got a turkey emoji from James. Uh, hey, thank you so much. Oh, I hope everybody had a, a nice uh, turkey day yesterday and, and gave thanks and all that wonderful stuff. Uh, tonight we have, like I mentioned, some news items, some first impressions on two manga that I read, and since uh, Willie T. Dustus was not here last week, we get to do an, a massive uh, haul segment with you. What have you picked up recently that you want to show the audience? I so this is a haul that I'm upset about because I'm once again I'm very far behind on my reading after I had caught up. Um and I, I haven't even I haven't counted because it would just stress me out. Um so I, I'm hoping that this weekend, since I really don't have anything going on, yeah. uh until like Sunday evening, I can just use the time to catch up on stuff. But it's, I get so easily distracted by like TV and it, it, cause it's sometimes I'm just like, I don't feel like reading right now, mm -hmm. turn on a movie or like I need to do these chores. There's a ton of laundry that we don't have done. I'm going to do that. And then I turn something on to watch during that. And if it's like a TV show, then I'll just sit down and keep watching after I'm done. So yeah, anyway, that's, that's why I'm not caught up with stuff. And I was sick. I was sick for a damn, I, I was like literally had all these books with me cause I had to travel a little bit and I had all this yeah. stuff with me. And um, I was planning on reading while I was not at home and I was sick. And so I literally, I couldn't like, I was either asleep or I was directly dealing with food poisoning, and, no, and I either way right. can't can't read. But this is what came in while I was out. Um, we'll just run through the stacks here. First up is Tomahawk Angel from uh, Dark Horse. This one is from o Odysseus Theodoratos, and oh my God. The artwork is like stunningly beautiful. Let me find a good page. So it. Is that like published in Japan or is it a web comic or what's the, what's the story behind this title? It's on the Tapas app. You can okay. see a little bit of his style here. Yeah. But there's a lot of like monsters that he draws. Like there's a monster coming out of a portal. Nice. Now you're thinking with portals. Um, but yeah, it's it's on Tapas, which is it shows right here. Yeah. Um, which is like a webtoon app type of thing. And um, cool artwork. Whoa, that's freaky. And so now they brought it physically. Um, I don't know. I don't remember where he's from. 
but uh, online he he goes by Mangaka Odi, Mangaka Ody, and uh, I talked about this on something, and someone uh, tagged him and was like, "Hey, Tomahawk Angel mentioned," and the guy was like, "Oh, that's awesome!" That I was like talking about his work. Right. Um, the Adam, the beginning, Adam, the beginning, volume six. This one's been fun. I'll be the Soul Sender one. That I'll one be... came out like I think beginning of last month or something. I still haven't gotten to it. Uh, Girl I Like Forgot Her Glasses, Volume Six. I think this is the halfway point of this series because I, I think it ended with twelve volumes. I just or... saw the solicit for <clears throat> Volume Eleven on Twitter. Uh, Wicked Trapper Three, I believe Four is what we found was the last volume. Great Snake so. Ride Two. Nice. Uh, Black Knight Parade Volume One. This I one forgot they, to get that. They didn't have it on Crunchy, and then they added it like on the day of release. So it looks like that's something that they're going to be doing. Is anything that they don't have listed, they seem to be adding whenever it gets released. But there's something else that I realized that they didn't have was the series uh, My Girlfriend's Child, because Volume Three came out and they didn't have it, and I had to order it off of uh, the Bezos site, as you call it. Um, yeah. Kubo, Kubo Volume 10, 12 being the last one. Uh, Black Clover 33. Nice. Superman versus Meshi 2. I love mm -hmm. writing Superman on the back of that one, or on the front of that one. Operation Joker 2. Uh, Iruma Kun 4. Awesome. Darwin Incident 2. Five centimeters per second hardcover. Oh, you got that. Nice. Uh, finally picked up Centaurs. This one came out a little while ago. It finally came out. We've mentioned, we've talked about it for so long, and I've made videos on it, and you've made videos talking about it. It was delayed like five times. Jesus. I oh, there we go. There we go. Cool nice. girl. I love that one. Summer Hikaru died too. Um, and then these came from Yen Press. Uh, one more step, stand, uh, come stand by my side. Nice. Tokyo Babylon. They sent me, I'm going to be like candid here. They sent me two months worth of stuff really late. So like usually I'll read everything that they send me, like at least a couple chapters so that I can talk about them. But since they sent me both October and November's books, like after I put out my video for November, yeah. I'm probably not going to read a lot of the ones that they sent me. Like, and these are the, those two, as well as Bochi are the ones that I'm, I'm going to definitely read, but the rest of the stuff that they sent me, I might glance at a few of them, but they're not high priority, especially with how much I have. Um, yeah. Ogami-san can't keep it in. Which had was that the? Sorry to interrupt. Was that the box you told me about for the with the uh, pharmacy? Oh, uh, no, the that Yen was press press one. that was a different Yen Press one. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, gotcha. they they had a, another box that was just a bunch of manhwa, but then all of the manhwa that they sent me in that first box was also in the other box. So I have like two copies of several books. Nice. Uh, Witch Hat Kitchen, Saving Eighty Thousand Gold, Volume Three. Quality Assurance in Another World, Volume 4. Shangri-La Frontier, Volume 8. Tezuka's Hundred Tales. It finally came out as well. I need to get that. Soul Eater, Volume 12, Hardcover. And Everything is Fine, Volume 2. So that's that's all of that. And then I've got another pretty large uh, haul coming in from um, IST. Because I a wonderful sponsor. I know I took it there. Um, there they currently are doing their Black Friday stuff, but the first day on Tuesday, on a new release day at that, they had a manga sale, and there was a ton of new volumes of manga that came out on that day. So I took advantage of their uh, additional percentage off for Black Friday, and I bought uh, a bunch of those new books. So I'm waiting on those to come in right now. But well done. other Black Friday sales that are still ongoing, if you guys haven't checked them out, you can check it out now. Uh, they've got Dark Horse books are, I believe, 40-something percent off right now, 40% off. Um, Marvel is up to 38 or something like that. 
DC is up to some percentage. I, I don't remember uh, the percentages on everything, but there's a lot of high high sales happening all the way through the week. And today, if I'm not mistaken, today they have it to where your loyalty discount is 3% off instead of 2% off. And that's going to be for a couple more days. So if, if you have the loyalty discount active and there's some stuff that you need to buy, whether it's old or new, you can get some some decent extra cash off on those uh, on that. You get that $50 or more. You get free shipping within the U.S. Fantastic packaging, fantastic customer service. Sinstocktrades.com. Insert mouth heart. Uh, so, yeah, there you go. A uh, quick reminder for everybody. Thank you to our wonderful sponsor, In Stock Trades. Next uh, Monday, the next show will be the fifty-dollar gift card giveaway. Uh, open to anybody out there in the world. If you're interested in participating, all you have to do is show up and hang out in the chat, follow the rules, and we'll pick out a winner by the end of that stream. Uh, again, that is courtesy of our wonderful sponsor, InStockTrades.com. Also, pretty cool that Thor finally got uh, dethroned and Berserk uh, Hardcover Volume 14 is the top seller right now. Where That's is Thor even still on there? I don't see it in here. I think it's sold. Oh, no, it's in, it's in here. Look at that. I was going to say, maybe it's sold out. It's still there. At least one of the covers. Uh, but that's cool, Berserk. And uh, this was my pick this week when we did the Monday show, the Aquaman Andromeda hardcover. So that's nice. really cool to see that here. If you guys are interested in a different uh, Aquaman story, go, uh, pick this up. So shout out to Insect Tree. Uh, Bean Queenie, thank you for joining. I uh, appreciate it. Also, it's a weird Friday night, so uh, I appreciate everybody that tunes in because uh, I know we uh, normally don't stream on Fridays, but thank you. So uh, that was a great haul. Uh, I, I got some books, but unfortunately, the majority of what I wanted this month came out this week. So uh, you're not going to see it because <laughs> it hasn't even shipped. It, it was, uh, but I got a bunch of cool stuff, too. It was a big week this week. And I forgot some books and some uh, I still have on my uh, on my cart and others sold out. I'm like, damn it, I, I couldn't get to everything. You know, I, I didn't have the budget for to go all out. So I had to pick and choose my battles. And uh, so that was frustrating and, and funny. So I don't know when I'll get everything, but eventually. I still have, I'm in the same, like, because I bought most of the, the stuff this week from IST, but they don't get everything. So I, and some of the stuff sold out, like as it was in my cart, it sold out. Um, so I have like 13 books currently in my my cart over at Crunchyroll, but I haven't moved on them because I'm trying to see about the additional discounts. Yeah. Because yeah. they're supposed to give you, if you were a member of oh of, they changed that too right the the lower tier uh for the free shipping i think it was 20 bucks or something yeah apparently they they that. i don't but know but yeah I'm, I'm just i haven't made that order yet and i'm also kind of uh trigger shy because i have so much to read and i i don't want to bury myself even more immediately yeah. i i've been reading i can Actually, it's been a crazy week. I haven't done much progress, but I can show everybody the books. I showed them off on Monday. But some of the stuff I'm reading for a for a different sort of video that I'm making. Uh, I do have my Dangers in My Heart uh, review that's coming up soon, uh, next week. So I'm, I'm reading that. Uh, I'm catching up on, on Wave Listen to Me because the new volume came out, and I, I did get that. Same. And I'm I'm catching up on on Gantz 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 however you pronounce it to make a video on it. So yeah, a bunch of stuff. Gantz. It's, it's been a crazy week because of the holidays at work. Hey, you know, unrelated to everything, but maybe for you it happened. Yeah. Uh, my Castlevania Advanced Collection shipped. Really? Yeah. I don't. I don't think I have any notifications. I'm, now I'm going to check. I'm going to derail the show. Hold on. I was just thinking about orders that I have because I, I had a, a few like in my 
my sales and orders folder in my yeah. inbox that were older and that was one of them and and it shipped Ooh, you got the base game no no none of the collector's editions yeah none of the collector's stuff the and i'm i'm hoping that because the only other limited run i have right now open is jurassic park and i'm hoping that'll ship soon too mine says now shipping but it hasn't shipped yet so they'll, they'll get to it soon I have I currently have three open orders on the minute run. I got the Castlevania Advanced Collection. I picked the Harmony of Dissonance cover. I got the Jurassic Park collection and I got Persona 3 for uh, PS4. And I currently have on my wish list uh, Persona 4 for PS4 and uh, Gigabash, which got announced. So if you guys like uh, Kaiju Brawlers, I highly recommend a gigabash finally getting a physical edition you can get the dlc uh, godzilla shows up there's the second one with ultraman and you can have ultraman versus godzilla for the first time ever so that's going to be exciting uh bob fisher thank you for joining what up my friends Hello. Uh, what up, what up? Uh, next imagine oh, thank you both for doing the show <laughs> Was your stomach feeling well enough to take full advantage of Thanksgiving, Riley? Well, full full advantage. Full advantage. I I didn't go overboard, but not because my stomach wasn't feeling well, just because I didn't want to chance anything. Like I I had one plate that was not overstuffed. It was just small helping of each thing. Um, I didn't skip out on anything though. I I ate everything. Um, I just I didn't want to chance it, and it's I I. It's a combination of I, having had food poisoning last like for the entire week, but also um, uh, new medication that I'm on right now, having uh, like side effect of, of lessening my appetite. So like I'm not even I don't even really want to eat that much anymore. Yeah. Then I but I still fell asleep. like <laughs> I ate my food and then like sat on uh we we're at my my aunt's house and i sat on the the couch and just passed out and like my my grandmother was trying to say something to me and i was like i'm asleep and then i just went back to sleep <laughs> nice uh bob got origin uh one and uh innocent one origins sold out and i'm disappointed because i really wanted to get that day one and i I made my order and forgot. And when I came back, it, it was gone. So I was upset. It'll come back. Whatever. I ordered both of those. Uh, I did get innocent. I, I can tell you guys. You know, whatever. Uh, hold on. I ordered. Both. Uh, I got the link open. Don't worry. I did get innocent. I got wave. Listen to me. I got a berserk. Some other stuff. You'll see it eventually. I'll show it off on uh, either here or on my channel, whatever. I didn't yet order Origin because I don't think that the official date was until this coming week. So if it's available anywhere else, I haven't seen Wait, it. Wait, we are what? What Origin are we talking about? The, Boichi, the right? Yeah, right. It's okay, okay. Yeah. The official Boichi. release date is until next week. Because on on IST, I got Berserk, Tokyo Avengers, Team Phoenix, Sunbeams in the Sky, Shadows House, Oshinoko. Orb, uh, Honey Lemon Soda, Gundam Thunderbolt, Seraph at the End, Higurashi, uh, Dark Gathering, JJK, Innocent, Wave Listen to Me, Last Games, All 100, Call, My, Call the Name of the Night, uh, Chojin X, Beginning After the End, Fly Me to the Moon, Ennead, and Heart Gear. Um, nice. But they... Did Origin come out? Did I miss it? It did come out. I, I had it on my wish list, but it, it sold out. Huh. I thought it was not out yet because it, it didn't show even when I looked up. Uh... Now, if you click on it, it just says product information not found on IST, which means it got uh, deleted because because it's sold out. It's on uh, it's on Crunchy right now, though. So yeah, I'll add it to that order, I guess. And just I and also have the thing Sorry. I didn't see it. Sorry. I was just saying because I, I went through like all of their recent releases over on Crunchy and I just it wasn't in the the recent stuff. Also, didn't I get a copy of Tacopi's original Sin? Did that not go into my cart or something? 
I feel like there's stuff that I ordered that isn't. Uh, Takopi is still in, in at in stock trades. It's still available. Yeah, I, I swear to God that I I ordered a copy. I don't know. That's I weird. decided not to grab it now because I learned that it it's on Manga Plus. So I'm going to read it there, and if I really like it, I'll pick it up later. I'm having a internal battle with whatever happened last it's year. A, it's a crazy. I we told everybody it's a November's going to be crazy with releases, and and there you go. We got a bunch of stuff coming out all at once. And next week, I'm interested in getting uh, uh, what is it, Sengoku Yoko and uh, Gold Kingdom and Water Kingdom with some other crap. So that's going to be fun. More spending. Yay. Uh, I'm just very confused. We got a bookstore here and they put it out on the shelf. Grab them. Regular bookstore. Nice. I'm I'm just I'm very confused right now because I swear to God that I ordered a copy of Takopi's original sin and it's not in my order. It disappeared. That's weird. I don't I'm not happy about that. Also, next week, we got uh, Tech on King Crete coming out. If you guys are interested. And, uh, yeah. Tried I to already started. Uh, sorry. All right, go ahead. I tried to shoot my shot with that one and see if they'd send me an early copy, and I just didn't get a response. <laughs> They're like, ah, not, not, not today. Maybe later. <laughs> I did. I, I do want to mention, I am making uh, one of the manga videos that I do for the monthly releases. And December, I started building that for next week, and December is insane, guys. God damn next it. Thursday, on the 30th, we're going to do the previews for December, and we can chat about it. But it is another amazing month of just nonstop releases. Even with the missing items, which is the big ones, which were going to be uh, Trigon and Vinland Saga, those kind of, like, left a huge gap for the month in my opinion but there's still a lot of fun uh, fun stuff coming out next month oh hey you know what's coming out next month that's not manga related but i do want to mention it here because you do read it and you are a fan of it uh kaiju max the final deluxe edition Ooh, that comes I didn't out that. second second week of december that is that is something I'm excited about. Yeah. So that's going to be the final one. If you guys were collecting that series in deluxe hardcover. Seasons I 5 and 6, yeah? Yep. <clears throat> I'm, I'm excited about that one. Well, Fisher, uh, I think I need to try no buy month. I envy you. Yeah, good luck with that, brother. I'm, I'm rooting for you. Like, if it works, let me know. Because I'd like to do that someday. But then again, I wouldn't have like new stuff to read. Or stuff to talk about on the channel. I just I get anxious because I fall behind, and then it's like I've got so much stuff to catch up on. Yes, and I wind up spending more the next month anyway. Yep, yep. It's like a book subscription that we're on. You know. Yeah, I I need to probably just like clear my read list, like just drop some stuff. That would be the wiser thing for me to do. Uh, speaking of uh, wise things to do, let me uh, segue into one of our first topics tonight. Uh, we do have three news articles here from uh, Anime News Network, friends of the show. I don't have sources for most of them, so that's why I'm... Or I do, but they're Japanese websites, but yeah, whatever. It's not like A&N will care for giving them free promo. Uh, but I do have a solicit, or two solicits, and... Uh, a discussion for uh, the end of Hunter Hunter, which I thought was pretty interesting, especially the reaction from the crowd. That was what was most interesting to me because I saw the news. I'm like, yeah, okay, it makes sense to me that the, uh, the author would do that. Okay, cool. But the reaction was wild to me, especially on social media applications. I I made a video about it, and I saw your video. Yes, the the reaction that i got like the comment section of it was weird oh yeah it's all over the place 
Uh, but let's get to this one first. I thought this was pretty cool. Uh, this was from uh, yesterday. Uh, we are getting a manga adaptation of Omori, which is a very popular indie game for the Nintendo Switch. I, th I don't know if... Uh, yeah, it later came out on other platforms, but it, it debuted on, on PC and Switch and all that stuff. Uh, so that is pretty cool. I think this is going to be a fun one uh, for people. Uh, explore a strange world full of colorful friends and foes. Navigate through the vibrant and mundane in order to uncover a forgotten past. When the time comes, the path you've chosen will determine your fate and perhaps the fate of others as well. It's a little generic description, but a little taste for the, the thing. Kodansha's putting this out. That's pretty interesting. Uh, also, Anime NYC happened last week, and when I decided I took the executive decision here, uh, part-time owner here for Omnibros, I guess, <laughs> and decided not to cover it because it's already been a week and all of you guys know about it you, you you're just as nerdy as us about this stuff a uh, bunch of stuff got announced and instead what i want you guys to do is go to willie t dust's youtube channel omnibus collector put out a great video talking about all the stuff that got announced at anime nyc from uh, kodansha yen press uh whom else uh uh yen press kodansha i'm missing somebody <laughs> Seven Cs. Um, Denpa had one. Kuma had one. Oh, Denpa had my favorite one. Okay, yeah. yeah. Odd, Odd Taxi from Denpa. Um, yeah. could not, or sorry, Yen Press had eight eight manga and six manhwa slash webtoons. Uh, Kodansha had ten. And these are just physical. There were a couple of digital things out there too. Mm -hmm. um, Starfruit had five three of which are new horror books. And I then see. this one from Drawn and Quarterly was definitely the biggest announcement, like as far as if, if you're a classic manga fan, um, yes. this was huge. This and, is like one of the big ones to get yeah. for uh, fans of the medium itself. And I was a little bit bummed out that it didn't get the hype it deserved. But I get it because of the nature and the demographics of like the young kids that are reading manga and all that stuff. They they're not going to check this out at first. Uh, but yeah, drawn and quarterly licensed Sanpei Shirato's The Legend of Kamui. Uh, that is huge. This is one of the uh, legendary manga that inspired so many others. Yeah, and it's something that like we. I mean, you you know we bear we rarely get classic manga in the u.s mm -hmm. so when you have something like this like it's such a big deal and it's not something small either it, it was a 21 volume series in the u.s they're putting it out in 10 volumes uh starting late 2024 so this is going to be a, a pretty it's a big project for them which like usually drawn in quarterly just does smaller like single volume type releases mm -hmm. the, the biggest things they've done Excuse me, of course, were the Gege no uh, Kitro set, which I believe is seven volumes. Yep. And um, and then also the history of, Sh excuse me, Showa. History of Showa was four volumes. But four. usually it's like single volume releases from them. They're doing Tsuge, and I think the fourth one comes out next year. So right. it's an ongoing hardcover release. Uh, um, but yeah, this one for 10 volumes, that's a lot. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. Yeah, so classic samurai manga um, that was from uh, what nineteen yeah nineteen sixty four was was published in Garo magazine, which is an alternative manga magazine, a Gekiga magazine, if you will, um, and it was published for until seventy something, I believe. I don't remember the the exact years, but. Um, it's never been released in English except for a, a two volume spinoff that was one of the first manga ever to be released in English. It was released back in like 87 or something like that, 89, uh, by Viz and Eclipse uh, as uh, Legend of Kamui. So that's the only Kamui that we've gotten before, but now we're getting the original, the entire original series coming from Drawn and Quarterly. And th it's huge. This is a huge yeah. deal. And I, I wanted to. I wanted to make sure that we highlighted it here because 
I don't think it got as much fanfare since Drawn Quarterly. I don't believe they had a panel at at the convention. They just had a booth and they were handing out like flyers that that said that they were doing this. Uh, so yeah, uh, the manga story follows Kamui, a rogue ninja who tries to free himself from the iron fist of his own clan and that of society as a whole in feudal Japan. So you like avant-garde uh, manga and all that fun stuff. Uh, you're going to dig this one. Uh, Bob Fisher is asking for the illustrations for this. Uh, let me. This is the original article here from ICV2. Uh, Legend of Kamui is exciting to me. Do you guys know the style of it, illustration-wise? I can show you real quick here. It is a little difficult because there's not a lot of great scans out there of the artwork. Yeah. And the style, it changes a little bit. Like yeah, the as the series got older, it does change. But I'm looking for the one from straight up the early 60s. Is this one right here is uh, the Eclipse one from 87. That's not it. <laughs> Dang it. I had it a couple hours ago when I was looking through the stuff. I, I guess I should search for the Japanese name here for uh, Kamui. What was it? Kamui Den? Yeah. And so you're looking more for that the gray image or the red one, the yeah that this that one. Like, well, that's a deviant art, but that's based on yeah. something, and the style was kind of the same. Here yeah, that, this, that's what this is what we're looking at. Yeah. So that's what it's going to look like for the first volumes and stuff, but the style does change a little over time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, I, I would say it gets a little more, quote, like mature looking. Um, yeah. But yeah, this, this is definitely something for like those who love the medium, those who are invested in the classics. Uh, this is something to be really excited about. Not to be confused with Golden Kamui. Another uh, <laughs> classic of the medium. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but that's also great too. So shout out to Drawn and Quarterly. That's that's uh, going on my list for uh, most anticipated books of uh, 2024, which I think we'll do a stream on that before the year ends. We we got a bunch of Thursday shows next month. Uh, maybe if you want to pull pull that together, just like five books you're excited for, and I'll do five. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'll I'll get something because I'm gonna do my the same that I did last year. I did a like twenty three for twenty twenty three. I'm gonna do a twenty four for twenty twenty four this time. Nice. Can you imagine if we're still doing this in like the year two thousand fifty five, and and you'll say like, here are my fifty five upcoming manga releases for the year two thousand fifty five. At that point, I'll probably cut it down and be like. Just, just ten. I'm just gonna do <laughs> ten. Just ten. Yeah. So that that is awesome. Uh, shout out to Drawn and Quarterly once again. Uh, 1964 to 1971. The other uh, news here. I guess we can talk about this. Uh, if I'm not gonna, well, I'm not gonna show the full article because I don't know if people want to be spoiled for this. I just say that uh it was leaked at first but then we got the official sources and all that stuff uh that uh, a friend of the show yoshihiro togashi revealed the possible ending scenarios or the endings for uh, hunter hunter in the case that he unfortunately passes away uh, the manga creator revealed one out of four possible endings and I'm very, I'm a very forgetful person when it comes to some of these books, so I didn't mind reading it, and I assure you, I already forgot most of it, so I'm good. But I know a lot of people will be upset if I just reveal it, so I'll just leave the page like this. Uh, so essentially, Togashi has had um, chronic pain issues uh, for many years, and this is 
it doesn't i wasn't surprised if i were in his shoes i would also think of doing this as you pour your life into this work it's your it's your baby you saw it from from its inception from inside your head to finally writing it and publishing and all that stuff and it became a huge global phenomenon anime figures manga clothing whatever i had a freaking hunter hunter shirt the other day at work so it's huge and you want to see it through so this is something that i think a lot of creators think about and do in the case that they pass away maybe some maybe it's a little bit too taboo so they don't want to touch that stuff and and uh unfortunately they die and and they don't have any plan things uh for their books but it's good to have these scenarios just in case you never know and the reaction from the crowd was all over the place i saw a lot of people like very first world problems uh complaining that oh this wouldn't happen if you get somebody to draw it dude I'm yeah like, that's not that's what are you talking about dude shut up and then some other people were complaining that uh instead of doing this you should just keep writing and creating stuff and then putting putting it out and then i don't know I, and obviously it's not all uh, a lot of people are uh, are rooting for uh togashi and and uh you know that empathy is there for for him and and they and we all want him to succeed and, and create this thing so uh I, I don't know i don't know how to feel about this i think it's 90 or at least five percent blown out of proportion for people what do you think um so i i had posted a, a video about it on on tiktok and it, it got a you know small amount of not small it, it got like 50 60 000 views so it, it got a yeah, decent that's, that's a lot yeah it got a decent amount of views um i'm just comparing because i had after that i had one that got like five hundred thousand. so it's in comparison not like the biggest <laughs> yeah but okay so so it got a decent amount of views and stuff and, and in that like i had a lot of people commenting and it was like you said like a lot of people just being like he just needs to do this he should do this and it's this this weird like toxic ownership that the fandom has over stuff and yeah. it happens with a lot of things and it's for whatever reason happening so heavily with hunter hunter and it like it always it upsets me and i try not to let stuff online upset me like that because it's not worth it but like in this case it does especially because we saw the same type of behavior lobbed towards uh miura whenever he was you know having hiatus between stuff and like yeah. people would get mad at him and call him lazy and say like he's he just doesn't want to do it like he he's busy playing video games instead of doing what he should be doing and um and it's it's rude and it's and stuff and obviously like none of that was really the case with him like he was sick and then he passed and yeah. here like togashi has been much more open about his illness about his chronic illness in the past and people are still like the, in my comments i had people saying like he clearly hates the series and doesn't want to continue it he's he's <laughs> lazy he needs to just uh just pass it on he blah, 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 blah. like all of these different like really strange just very toxic opinions and people trying to say that he should or should not do certain things because it's based on what they want from it. And I, I made a response that didn't get as many views, but basically stating kind of, you know, you mentioned like, this is his baby. This is his thing. Like if, if you're an artist, you, cause I, the, someone just stated like he needs to let go of his pride. And I was like, no, he doesn't oh, be doing worse. Damn. Like he, he should he should be proud of his stuff and and present it in the way that he wants it to be presented. And as his audience, we should want for him to give it everything, like put everything into it. Mm -hmm. and, and there was a quote that I pulled from uh, Tetsuo Hara uh, that maybe you saw, maybe you didn't. Um, he was talking recently. It was about AI. Oh, the where like 
Yeah, yeah, I, I know the one. Yeah. So the quote is about AI, but I felt like it applied to this as well. Um, it says, what AI cannot do is be prepared to die. You have to suffer, 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 and think it through. Then when you think this is really dying, there comes a point where you say, this is what I wanted. This is what it means to have a soul. I want to please all the readers with a picture that has that soul in it. For that reason, I put my life on the line, abandoning my own greed and killing myself. No matter how painful it is, I will do it. That's all I can do. And I felt like that applied here as well. Like you put yourself, you put your soul into what you do as an artist mm -hmm. and like you want to, to please your audience. And the best way to please your audience is to put everything that you have into your work. And if you don't, then then it's it's empty and it might as well just be created by by a robot or, or a program or whatever. Like, mm -hmm. so, yeah, it's just a lot of people have these weird kind of insensitive views because they take ownership and they they look at it and they're like, I want this to happen. I want to read the ending. I want to see what happens. And um, rather than allowing the creator the the space to to do the thing the way that they should do it they're just shitty about it um, i think it's that a lot of these people are without really knowing they are way too accustomed to the fact that these japanese uh creators are slaving away creating these things working day in and day out with very little sleep yeah. throughout like 20 30 years or whatever and they are uh they're entitled and they see that conveyor belt of just being fed stuff left and right without thinking about the people creating that stuff they are suffering the you know it's it's not like uh oh he took a break that means he sucks because blah 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 no he had to take a break because it's literally killing him and some creators have passed away unfortunately because of it it's no it's not like uh it's not a thing that magically just happens. Oh, a new chapter. There we go. Got it. Thank you. And it's like when recently Black Clover moved out, out of Weekly Jump. Oh, yeah. Or yeah. Went into Giga Jump. And it was because he had so many issues with keeping up with the weekly uh, uh, schedule that it was impacting his life and uh, and I believe partially his health, but also his life in general. And so he moved and a lot of people took that to be like a failure for the series itself. And it's like, no, they, they worked it out. Like he worked with the editors to figure out <laughs> the best thing to do so that he could continue working on the series because they, they don't want to cancel it. Yeah. Um, it. Just people get to have this separate, they get to separate themselves they get to do that and and they get to kind of act like it doesn't matter. Like they, they get to, to take on this opinion that like, you know, the, their entitlement is the most important part of everything. And it's like, well, that's how you wind up getting a, a series that has a shit ending like, because you true. Yeah. feel entitled to have what you want instead of allowing the creator to do what they need. And it, it just, it, it it really like it rubbed me the wrong way. And it was like, I, I wanted to make more response content to that, telling people like to screw off. Um, I mean, I, well, you can, but just be aware that those people are very negative. So you're going to get a whole lot of negative emotion piling up on you. A lot so. of them are also, I've convinced myself children like there's no way that some either they're children or they're adults that just haven't like emotionally matured. Yeah. Um, because there's no way like an, an emotionally mature adult is not going to have the same uh, reaction to, to certain things. Like have you probably seen it too. Like the, the number of people who are out there saying like that Tagashi has been faking his illness this entire time. I saw that one. Yeah. Is there like, that how can you be so sick that you can't draw? And they're, they're thinking sick, like, you know, he's sneezing or something, <laughs> you know, like that's what I'm thinking that they must be imagining. Like he's, yeah. Oh, I have a headache. I can't draw. It's not, yeah. it's not a headache guys. Well, a, a headache would be pretty debilitating if you're trying to draw. I, I will say that, but like, 
they, well, they well, know the yeah. what it is like it's it's his debilitating uh back issues from you know years of hunching over and doing the stuff to where he can't he can't sit in the drawing position like i, I think that they if i'm not mistaken they've had to rig something at some points where he could lay down and draw Wow. Um, I, I believe I saw that somewhere. I could be wrong, but I do know that it's so bad that like he can't even use the bathroom properly at times or, or ever. I don't, I don't know if it's a, if that's just period, but like, yeah, he, he talked about it in some of those exactly. like chapter notes where he's like, you know, I need help to, to use the bathroom. I need help after using the bathroom. Um, yeah. It's freaking terrible. Like it, I hope, I he, hope he gets better. Where people sit there calling him a liar and a faker, and and like saying that he hates the series and that like he just doesn't want to. I'm like, dude, if he hated the series and didn't want to work on it, he could just drop it. Like, yeah, nothing's keeping him. Like, what's the contract gonna do? He breaks the contract, and they're like, you'll never work for us again. He's like, good, I'm kind of done with this. <laughs> stuff. And yeah. and it's not like his his wife created sailor moon like his family has money she makes way more money on sailor moon than he does on absolutely they can live off the royalties from that and and even from the yu yu haku show and and uh a hunter hunter anime royalties like even even if breaking contract meant that he no longer got royalties for his work they could still just live off of her stuff so like there the point that i'm making is like the the theory that like he hates it and that he should just like he's being forced to work on it or something but he's just putting it yeah, off that's, that's is, dumb. is dumb there's there's no like weight behind that yeah i want to like every time someone says it i just want to slap them through the <laughs> screen like whenever i read someone like he actually just hates it and that's um, i just i want to take them and just pa. <laughs> Uh, you put the nail on the head, Gia. The root of the problem lies in what's termed in social psychology effective ident identification, subjective emotional investment in an ego associate. I will believe you. That that's yes. Thank you. Thanks for imagining it. That's true. Dark side of the fandom. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. But we got to focus on the right things, and. Uh, Hope that the man does get better and uh, can write at a good pace that he's comfortable with and starts getting uh, treatment and all that stuff. And, and uh, yeah, so hopefully these four, <clears throat> excuse me, these four scenarios do not happen because of this thing. And he can reach uh, the conclusion that, that he wants and not depending not to depend on this. Which uh, did you read the f the four endings? I I read the one that got uh, revealed, and it. I mean, I haven't. I'm not caught up right now. Like I, I've only read what's Same. in Tonkaban. Yeah. So Same. I don't know exactly how like it lines up with what we've read. Yeah. Volume thirty seven just came out last month, so I need to read that. I, I haven't caught up. I ordered a copy finally because it sold out places. So I, yeah. I ordered a copy and I'll read that pretty soon. Um, and then after that, I might catch up with the other chapters because I'll probably have some traction with the mm -hmm. reading. It's an object culture thing, etc. That in the case happens to be uh, yes. <laughs> sorry, uh, I, I, I'm in a haze. It's, it's Friday. I'm, I'm sorry. Next imagine it, but I'm putting it up there so all of you can read it. Uh, self and all that fancy words i'm i'm running on fumes tonight sorry folks uh, it's been a long ass day <laughs> uh so yeah uh get well uh togashi wishing wishing uh him the best and the family too i'm pretty sure that's very stressful for the yeah. whole family I know another thing that people there's uh, just going over some other stuff that people say there's a rumor that's been around for years that his wife uh, that Naoko Takeuchi would take over that she's that, been that's a wild rumor it does yeah. not have any foundation for no, it to be true no and people believe it so heavily that like there was someone that came in my comment section and said like well didn't 
isn't his wife like didn't his wife uh practice his art like emulating his art style so she could take over after he passes and i was like no i just said no that is a completely unfounded rumor that showed up on the internet years ago but there's no basis in that it's just something that people have kicked around i think it was like on a forum someone said something like it just spread a big wildfire yeah it was like a what if this could happen and then everyone was like ooh, yeah this ooh, ooh. but it's not mm -hmm. a but yeah, the person that I that commented was like, "Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't realize that. Like, I, I don't, I didn't mean to spend it, spread any misinformation." It's like the misinformation of people saying that like the David Production stated that they couldn't do Steel Ball Run because of the horses. The horses, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. that that wasn't a thing either. They said that it'll be more difficult because they don't want to have to do CGI, but that they're hoping that they get hired to do that part. And if they do, like it would take time and money, it'll be more difficult, but not that they can't do it. I just, I, I'm watching uh, uh, Undead on Luck. That's by David Production. And that has a bunch of CGI. So like, yeah, I, they, I think they said this at the time that like part five was about to come out the anime oh, okay. and they hadn't yet done CG in any of Jojo's and they, that's why they didn't want to do CG is because they wanted to keep it uh, the same. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But then they started using CG um, in part six, I believe it has some CG animation in there. So they'll probably use that to simplify any scenes with a bunch of horses, but I'm going to guess that any scenes with like, one horse uh like where it's just a couple characters riding horses should be fine yeah if uh if progressive animation can do it with apare ranman david production could knock it out of the park because apare ranman was much more complicated because you had diff many different vehicles in a race whereas the horse all the horses are going to have the same anatomy so you're just going to I'm not saying it's that easy. I'm not an expert, guys, but I would assume animating in CG a uh, vehicle is difficult, more difficult than a horse. Uh, who knows? But I'm not an animator, so uh, I do want to point out before I do the first impressions that I am so annoyed that I cannot watch the new Gegege no Kitaro film. I am so pissed off. You have, you guys have no idea. So I am desperately hoping that this gets uh, released in the West on Blu-ray or streaming or somewhere. G kids, come on, somebody. I don't know. So yeah, this is uh, rank number two opening weekend and sold a bunch of a uh, bunch of yen and tickets. That's awesome. But it, it has some steep competition as Godzilla minus one is out. So I don't know. But what a great year for uh, Shigeru Mizuki fans because you got this movie, Akuma Kun, is on, on Netflix and it's a wonderful adaptation. And uh, uh, yeah, just great for, uh, for the family and, and friends. Anyhow, first impressions. Uh, we can wrap up the show with this. I read two romantic comedies wanted to because i typically talk about like quirky action stories and and uh sometimes horror on on these first impressions streams so i wanted to change things up and uh two new series debuted recently one of them is hope you're happy lemon this one came out in october and the other one is Blooming Love, which started back in May. And I totally forgot to talk about Blooming Love. So I reread some chapters. Uh, I'm not up to date with it. It has like uh, 17, 18 chapters out so far. And I wanted to talk about it real quick. Let me show the Manga Plus link. There we go. Let's start with this one. Uh, Hope You're Happy Lemon is a manga written by Mizuki Kishikawa that I am not, I'm not familiar with this person's work. I am only seeing three credit roles or three uh, listings here, but uh, it is, I think this is his first published uh, serialized work. 
And I went in completely blind when I read this. I didn't even look up the description. I just knew that it was uh, one of the central themes was uh, cheating and I was, or infidelity, and I was skeptical and a little bit scary. I'm like, is this, um, uh, uh, what's the word that the kids use on the internet? Uh, is this some NTR bullshit? I don't know. <laughs> so I went, in, I went in, I'm like, what is going to happen on this thing? Because manga can be crazy like that. You know, it, it doesn't matter that it's an, uh, it's a show end. They can, they can go places. So hope you're happy. Lemon is the story. Let me pull up the names. Cause I'm very forgetful. Sorry. Uh, we follow a character called Sunao Akiyoshi. I believe they're all in college, so uh, the, no minors involved, thankfully. And Sunao is getting over an epic... Uh, um, what, what do I call it? I forgot the, the word. He was dumped uh, in high school in a very epic fashion. Let's just say that much. Uh, with uh, by the character of Lemon Nishikawa, uh, this young girl that you're seeing here in the cover of the manga of the illustration there. And she supposedly, out of the blue, decided to cheat on Sunao, and uh, not once, not twice, but three times with three different individuals. And our boy here, our main character, cannot get over that so at the start of the manga he is still feeling that depression and anger and frustration over what happened and can't seem to get over that slump and think he thinks the rest of his life is just going to be doom and gloom because of what happened it was such a traumatic traumatic event for him so he labels lemon as the witch and is just trying to keep uh, his college life afloat and uh, he's in a film club. So there are supporting cast members that are integral to the plot that uh, want to cheer him up and do things and all that stuff. And on a particular day, uh, they were supposed to be having a film club meeting or something. And uh, Sudao is friends with this other character called Natsumi, a uh, very wholesome, sweet girl. And, they were supposed to meet up. Uh, I don't remember the exact details, but uh, she left and Sunao ends up meeting with Lemon by accident after many years of the whole incident when they were boyfriend and girlfriend. And Lemon, there might be a twist to the story in that she may not have cheated on him and it may have been a farce on her end and not really... Uh, uh, not really happened, but Sunao doesn't know this, and we don't know the full details at first. So, after awkwardly meeting, uh, comes the big twist of this series, which surprised the hell out of me because I wasn't expecting it. Uh, Sunao and Lemon individually, uh, from each other, apart from each other, sorry, they spot a shooting star in the city and they make a wish, and the manga turns into a body swap story. So the morning afterwards, Sunao is now in the body of Lemon, and Lemon's now in the body of Sunao, and hijinks ensue. They're going to try and figure out what happened and how they can reverse their bodies back and uh, try to understand each other. And that's when the reveal drops that uh, Lemon isn't what she seems at first. Um, it may have been a, a cover-up story, if you will, about the cheating. So... I was happy about that because I thought this was going to be a, one of those weird pervy manga. Uh, so far, it doesn't go that route. So it's like your name. Thank you, James. Yeah, sounds like your name, but not as dramatic and more rom-com friendly in a shonen magazine. Uh, the one thing that I really love about this series is the art. I really like the character designs. I think they're great, and it makes for a quirky uh, story like this, uh, much more enjoyable to read. So you can see some of the art here. Uh, this was in high school when uh, Lemon dumped our main character. So, yeah. I, I just saw the cover and I thought, that is really striking. I want to check it out.
and I enjoy it. It's fun. There's some uh, different scenes of the characters. It has a little Oshinoko vibes with the eyes. I don't know if you can pick up on that from these previews. All they're missing are the uh, the huge star uh, irises. But I don't know. It reminded me of Shonen Jump stuff with uh, Oshinoko. Yeah, let me show you a little bit more right here. That's when they meet up. And let me show you the body swap thing that happens. The other chapters involve them like going to their respective schools and uh, trying to pass off as the other person and all that stuff. So it's stuff you've read before. If you like romantic comedies and uh, body swap stories. So this is the morning after when... There we go. They uh, uh, figure out that uh, they've been swamped by magical shenanigans from shooting stars. The real villain of the story is the shooting star. Just saying, you know. But that's not all. So I read that. Hope you're happy, Lemon. Which is fine. Uh, only has five chapters so far, so it's a quick read. If you guys want to check it out, you can read it for free on Manga Plus, the uh, Manga Plus website, um, desktop or mobile. Uh, this is not an ad, by the way. I'm just a fan. And the other rom-com that I decided to talk um, to talk to you guys about is Blooming Love, which surprised the heck out of me and is my favorite of the two. Uh, let me find some of the credits here that I can read off. Uh, Blooming Love is written by Daichi Kawada. Again, I don't know much. I know that he is or was an assistant on Full Night and Steel of the Celestial Shadows. These two manga are coming out next year from Viz Media. So that's exciting. And I think this is one of his first long-running series that is being published. Does uh, have... He does have a bunch of other short stories and uh, here and there, but this is like the first big one. So Blooming Love, you can see here, is the story of Shintaro Ibuki and Kyoko uh, Sugisaki. Uh, Kyoko has a very scary demeanor, and uh, Shintaro is this wholesome nerd uh, that is in art class and, and painting and all that stuff. And Kyoko one day shows up at the art club, and she you would think she is a delinquent character, she's so serious and all that stuff, but she's interested in the arts and drawing. And uh, Ibuki is dumbfounded because he's judging uh, the book by its cover, if you will. And when he's having a craftsman problem, or however you say it, sorry. It turns out that Kyoko is the one that will help him out with that and helps him build a, I think it was a, like a bird box or a ballot box or some wooden box. And uh, she's actually really good at craftsmanship. So Ibuki's intrigued and follows her around. She is taking the art classes because she wants to, do art after uh, she graduates, hoping to get into art school uh, or an art university. And uh, Ibuki is trying to figure her out, but the personalities clash. You got this wholesome, shy kid, and she is like uh, an extrovert and uh, has a very stern, uh, powerful demeanor. And the big secret for this, I don't, I don't think I'm revealing too much because it happens very, fairly quickly, is that uh, Kyoko Sugisaki is, she is a craftsman, craftsman, craftswoman, woman, and she works for her grandfather, 
as a taiko drum maker, if I remember correctly. So she does have a lot of experience, and, and it's really cool to see the whole taiko drum assembly thing. And it's just a sweet romantic comedy of opposites attracting, I guess. And uh, she's intrigued by his gentle nature and concern over her and uh, her uh, not getting the artistry thing down. So he's going to try and help her. But with her demeanor, it doesn't uh, kick off right away. And Ibuki's uh, giving off. Uh, they're all giving off the, the wrong signal. So it's that sort of play with the rom-com aspect. I'm typically not a fan of high school romance, but... I liked the character design so much that I wanted to give it a shot, and I ended up actually digging it. It's 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 fun. Let me show you guys some of the art while I'm at it. Uh, so I do like the character designs a lot in this, as you can see. Uh, Kyoko has a very mean-looking face, and for a manga that's based on art. There are some great uh, poses in this story. You can see some of that over here. Like I think it's drawn uh, very in a very elegant way, which uh, attracted me to read more. So yeah, she's kind of a badass when it comes to building all this stuff, and he's super intrigued. She of course doesn't doesn't believe it at first and thinks uh, he's being condescending or or uh, mocking her uh, for her uh, skills, but that is not uh, true. He's uh, a good kid. So yeah, if you're interested in the romantic comedy subgenres and all that fun stuff, uh, you got two to check out. Hope You're Happy Lemon and Blooming Love. Out of the two, I would recommend Blooming Love. I thought it was a, a little bit uh, quirkier and uh, funnier and, and better, in my opinion. And uh, I'll be uh, reading more of it. So, yeah. Sort of my first impressions there. There you go. Uh, so yeah, this is. I'm looking for the scene with the taiko drum. They are uh, working at the art uh, art room class, and the taiko drum club is disturbing them. So uh, they go check it out, and that's when our main character discovers that she works on the drum making. Let me save. Here it is. Yeah, there we go. So that's the uh, the actual drum that we're talking about. So she's dedicated to making the drums with uh, her grandfather. So, yeah. Be on the lookout if you are interested into uh, rom-coms. Again, you can read it for free on the Manga Plus website right here. Uh, you can read all the chapters for free on the app. So take advantage of that. You can download the app on your phone and, and read it from there. So there you go. Are any any of these two uh, pique your interest? I'd probably check them out. Like if, if we get them physically, I'd, I'd definitely. Yeah. Uh, both are shown in. So hopefully they get announced one day in one of the uh, biz solicits or something. We shall see. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, real quick, guys, let me remind you before we close shop for tonight uh, that our show is sponsored by the wonderful folks at InStockTrades.com. Oh, that massive haul that Willie T. Dustin showed off earlier in the stream that uh, was from InStockTrades.com, your home for all things uh, collected editions. You get your omnibus, trade paperback, hardcovers, box sets, uh, gallery editions, treasury editions, manga, everything that you need book-wise, you'll find it at InStockTrades with great, deal, the great deals that range from 42 to 50% off. Uh, if you make an order of 50 bucks or more in the U.S., you get free shipping. Loyalty discount adds an extra 2%, uh, of course, uh, on a week-by-week -week basis. 
and uh, take advantage of that Black Friday sale that is still going on. Uh, tomorrow is the, or is it today, the loyalty discount phone? Yeah, it's active right now. It's active right now. So for uh, for this weekend, be sure to grab it. Uh, instead of an extra 2% on the loyalty discount, it's been bumped to 3%. So a lot of cool manga that just came out you can get for real uh, cheap money. Uh, fantastic customer service. Wonderful packaging. That's InStockTrades.com, our official sponsor here at Omnibros Live here on the Omnibus Collectors Network. Shout out to IST. Uh, let's see. A couple questions from the chatters. Tokyo Pop has new license. If you guys want to go over the those this stream or not, it's up to you. Uh, I you mentioned this earlier, H Field. There we go. Uh, Tokyo, Tokyo Pop just announced maybe eight or more new licenses a day or two ago. There's one I'm very interested in: a smart and courageous child. Did you cover those in your video? No, because it's they, related to anime NYC. They were after the convention, and they were they. I, I think by the time that I had filmed it, they were already uh, or they hadn't been announced yet. Okay, uh, let me see if I can find it real quick before we leave in like five minutes. Hold on. Uh, oh, coming soon. I have no idea where I'm looking for, uh, what, what, what I'm looking for here, but uh, maybe if I go to their social media, that would be. Yeah, I just, on their, um, on their Twitter, on their X account. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Twitter, 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 Twitter. Okay. No, no, not that. Well, I can't seem to find it. So, but I, I, I believe you when when you say eight new books. That's awesome. Uh, we'll there talk about it. Uh, uh, I don't know. There's stuff that goes back quite a ways. So I don't know exactly which. Yeah, I'd have to dig through that uh, to pull up the links. On their Twitter, there's like from the 10th, the genius puppeteer loves the Holy Knight fiercely. And then on the 12th, they had the uh, Wild Beast Forest House. And then uh, on the 13th, Dinner for Three. Uh, on the... Uh, let's see. 16th, Jealousy Blinds Love. Uh, on this. Oh, I'm way out. I can't see any of that. Okay. I'm, now I got it. Her Royal Highness seems to be angry. It was announced on the 19th. And then you know, on the 21st was the Smart and Courageous Child. I'm and on July. Holy crap. Hold on. November 22nd, oh. A Beast's Love is Like the Moon. I think that was the last one that they announced from like the past week or two. Oh, there you go. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Thanks for doing the show tonight. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. It means a lot to us. Uh, if On your way out, if you hit the like <laughs> button, I'd appreciate it. Um, it means a lot and uh, helps the channel grow. I need to catch up on Blue and Love. I love the character designs. Girl with big eyebrows for the win. Even though it's cartoonish, I, they look very real to me. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's the body posing and the comp uh, the composition and anatomy or something that's happening. Uh, but I like the way everything's laid out. And crafting stuff is very hands-on and, and technical and all that stuff. So I think it captures the essence pretty well. Out of the two, again, I do recommend Blooming Love uh, to uh, check out on a first impressions. Uh, so, yeah, uh, that is going to be it. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, William T. Dustis, where can people find you on the Internet when you're not here with us? Omnibus Collector on YouTube, TikTok, uh, Instagram. I don't really go on Twitch right now. Uh, Omni Collector on Twitter. 
Uh, if you want all the news that did come from Anime NYC, I have that video on my channel. I put it up yesterday. Yeah, I did it yesterday morning. Um, so you can check that out. And uh, I'll be back with a new video hopefully in the next couple days. Uh, going over my haul from last month or whatever. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, me, uh, Manga Geekdom, where I talk about all the manga that I'm reading and uh, hauls and discussions and all that wonderful stuff. Uh, put out a couple videos if you guys want to check it out. Pretty fun. Uh, we'll be back next Monday for Hall's Previous Reads and the $50 gift card giveaway. So if you want to uh, participate for a shot at winning that gift card, be sure to tune in next Monday, 8 ish p.m. 8 eight oh five maybe 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time uh, when uh, we go live. So thank you everybody for joining us. God bless. Stay safe out there. Thank you, James. Uh, I do have a Discord if you guys want to join and chat with me. I'd appreciate it. That's it for now. Have a great weekend. We will uh, catch you next time on Omnibros Live here on the Omnibus Collectors Network. See you then, folks. So long.